Now we're going to move on to the gas planets, the gas giants, starting with the fifth planet in the solar system, also the largest planet in the solar system. Close. Jupiter. We'll zoom on over here and come in right here. And actually in this image here, before I get too close, we can see the four Galilean moons of Jupiter, the four moons that are visible from Earth through a telescope, um, which are Io, Callisto, Ganymede, and Europa. Uh, I think I can, yeah, they're all labeled there, as well as one that we can't see that still shows up the label for, Amalthea. But I'll zoom in particularly on Jupiter here. Now Jupiter is big. Jupiter is like really big, right? It's it's so big. If you were to take all the other planets in the solar system on one side of an imaginary teeter totter and Jupiter on the other side, Jupiter is still heavier. It's still going to outweigh all the other planets combined. Now, of course, I'm not counting the sun and I'm not counting the the entire asteroid belt and and Kuiper belt you know, and everything else, but but it's really big. It's a lot bigger than you usually give it credit for. Um, and I'm gonna spin this around and we'll get another example here of its size. Right there, the great eye of Jupiter, the great red spot. I see. Yeah. It's a giant hurricane, essentially, that's been going on in the upper atmosphere of Jupiter for at least 600 years. We've been studying it for 300 years and it's been shrinking the whole time. So it's been it's been there for at least 600 years. And you could fit three planet Earths. If you had three planet Earth size objects, you could fit three of them end to end inside that storm there. You could fit something like uh, 100 something planet Earths and the whole whole Jupiter. I don't remember exactly how many. So that's Jupiter. And then the next one was named Saturn. There we go. That's actually pretty close this time of year. Zoom back in here and Saturn is very pretty, a lot of people's favorite planet because of those very pretty rings, right? Actually, I think uh, Galileo spent so much time studying it that I think, personally, that it might have been his favorite planet, which all just goes to show you, as Beyonce said, if you like it, put a ring on it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, now, does anybody know what those rings are made of? Rocks. Yep. Uh, dust clouds, gas clouds, and chunks of ice. Um, and they're actually very thin. They're thousands of kilometers from the inner edge to the outer edge, but only about 10 meters thick. Or in other words, if you were to have a piece of paper a mile long, right, or just like, like from a mile from there to there, and it's still just as thin as, thin as a piece of paper, that's about the scale that we're looking at. Actually, about once every 10 years, for a few months, Saturn turns completely sideways and we can't see the rings at all from Earth. They're just gone, they're, just, they're gone. And also we've got those cool gaps there. Do you see those? Mm -hmm. The Cassini gap there is what that one's called. And there's some other ones up and down, uh, smaller ones. And those are formed by what we call shepherd moons. See, the rings don't last forever. In, these, in, in the system of rings, you get sort of larger chunks of rock that start eating up the, the smaller chunks of rock, Katamari Damasi style. And as it does so, it's like a snowball rolling down the hill, right? It gets bigger and it leaves a trail behind it. Well, what we see there is the trail being left by these quote unquote snowballs rolling around in the rings. So would the rings eventually disappear altogether? Um, kind of. Yeah, we'll get to that one in just a minute when we look at some of the other planets that also have rings. 
I'll move on to this next planet here, the seventh planet in the solar system. Fun fact about this planet, the man who discovered it wanted to name it George. <laughs> No, he had, he actually had a he actually had a an understandable reason for that. Um, he was from England, and the king of England at the time was King George. So he said, "I've discovered a planet. I'm going to name it after my king. He's going to love me. He's going to give me a lordship or whatever they did back then, uh, and everything's gonna be great." Well, the trouble is, the other astronomers said, "No, you can't call it George. That's a silly name." So they went ahead and called it something sillier and named it Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, to answer your earlier question, Caitlin, we've got these, you can see Uranus's rings right here, these very thin lines here. Mm -hmm. So it is believed that uh, all the gas giants in the solar system used to have big flashy rings like Saturn and they've all just slowly worn away like this into shepherd moons that are still in there or that have fallen into the atmosphere. And speaking of which, we'll get on to our last gas giant, the other of the two ice giants in the solar system. Neptune. Go ahead and zoom in here and we can see again those remnants of the ring systems. And Neptune, I think that's it right there. Much like Jupiter also has a giant storm on it. And Neptune is actually only the second coldest planet in the solar system. Uranus is colder, even though it's closer to the sun, for multiple reasons. Atmospheric composition, um, the fact that it's tilted over on one side probably has something to do with it. But yeah, that's all eight planets in our solar system. And yes, we do usually get the request for, can anybody guess? Pluto. Pluto. Everybody wants to see Pluto for some reason. Is Pluto yeah, just a baby. I was like, is Pluto counted as a planet again? I feel like they keep going back. Pluto is classified as a dwarf planet. And, yeah, and uh, contrary to what people keep saying, they do not keep going back and forth. It's been a dwarf planet for several years now. Um pretty much since it, it got declassified as a planet. And uh, that's actually as far in as I can zoom on this software. Wow. I've, I've zoomed in as close as I can. It's still a little brown thing there. That's part of the reason why it's a dwarf planet is because it's just so small and so far away. Um, the big main reason is that it doesn't have its own clear orbital, right? It passes through Neptune's orbital, so until it can, basically until it can clean up its room, um, it doesn't get to be a real planet. Mm. Uh, but my my personal favorite reason, uh, my my go-to sort of in explaining why Pluto is not a planet, is there's about 40 other objects in the solar system that really aren't that different from Pluto physically in in just about any way. So, if we were to call Pluto a planet, there'd be no reason not to call those ones planets, and that would make third grade science so much harder. <laughs> so, what, what was so special about Pluto that made it? Yeah, um, so Pluto was probably the first dwarf planet discovered, which is why it was considered a planet, because we didn't have other a different group to put it in, right? Um, it was some guy, I forget who, um, some intern or something, uh, look, just studying just a small patch of sky, studying all the, all the stars and objects in just this little patch of sky night after night. And he noticed that one of them was moving. And if he hadn't been zoomed in on that particular point, like really close in his telescope, <clears throat> he never would have noticed Pluto at all. So he's just like, oh, I found this little tiny speck that's moving. And uh, it looks like it's going around the sun, so it must be a planet. And so that's how we got the then considered a planet, Pluto. And that's all for this episode. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next time to talk about the Earth and the Moon.